Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar hosted by the Collaborative Conservation and Adaptation Strategy Toolbox, or CCAST. My name is Christy Miner. I am the Non-Native Aquatic Species Community Practice Coordinator for CCAST. For those who don't know, CCAST is a platform for peer-to-peer -peer knowledge exchange and co-production of decision support tools on key management challenges, such as introduced aquatic species. CCAST supports different communities of practice, including this non-native aquatic species, one that we launched in May of 2020. We also support a grasslands community practice and a drought adaptation community practice. If you would like any more information on CCAST or any of our communities of practice, um, please feel free to email me or Matt Graybaugh and Matt will put our emails in the chat for you. Right now we have a ton of work going on, including webinars like this one, multiple case studies in development, and a continuing effort to coordinate American bullfrog work in the West. Webinars like today are one way that we facilitate peer-to-peer -peer knowledge exchange. And today we're very excited to host a presentation from Carol Pacey, who will discuss public education on native fishes through the Sharing Tales program. Carol is a program manager for Martian Associates, specializing in database management and environmental outreach. Carol has worked for Martian Associates for 14 years, but has worked with Dr. Paul Marsh, the Martian Associates founder, for 25 years after applying for a six month position with him at Arizona State University. When not working, Carol performs with her band, Carol Pacey and the Honey Shakers, around the desert Southwest and teaches biology at Chandler Gilbert Community College. Just a final reminder before I turn it over to our presenter, if you have questions, like we said during the presentation, please just enter those into the chat box and I will relay them to Carol after the presentation. Um, and we might have a chance to open it up for questions as well. And with that, Carol, we're ready for you. So I will awesome. hand the floor over to you. Awesome. So I need a second. I need to make me bigger for me and then push a couple more buttons for myself. Sounds good. Do what you gotta do. Learning some of my tricks. All right. Well, good morning or good afternoon. I see I have some friends from the East Coast in here. It's good to see you. Hopefully you already got to see all this behind me. Cast, see cast. That's a that's a lot. Um, and they're with all of these people as well in these organizations. And I'm very happy to be here talking to you today about what I've been up to for a while. So let me just go ahead and, and move on to where it's going to be looking more comfortable. Okay. So um, Again, my name is Carol Pacey. I'm with Marsh Education. We have a website. You can find us at marsheducation.org. Or if you'd like to reach out to me uh, directly, you can email me at cpacey at nativefishlab.net to reach me for anything you'd like. Um, this is fun. I have the little handout here that went with the, the program today, but I, I like being part of this non-native aquatic species webinar series. So thank you very much for, for, for bringing me in. So I got to kind of talk about a variety of things to get to the actual program. So like it said in my intro, I've, I've been around for a while. Um, I started with a, a, pro, a project in 1997 at Arizona State University where I pulled in all the information we could find at the time on native fishes and non-native fishes and what resources they use and where they overlapped in their different life stages. And that was a six month project. And at the end of that project, uh, Dr. W. L. Minkley and Dr. Paul Marsh asked me to stick around and uh, work with uh, fish data. And I was like, great, I don't know anything about fish data, let's do it. So I did that and we were at Arizona State University until 2008. And in that time is when we had our like pre-sharing tales time. So in that time, I found it very frustrating that most of the people in the state do not know about native Arizona fishes. And I found that very frustrating. Um, I also had some kids of my own during that time and rather enjoyed hanging out with them and spending time with them volunteering in their school. And I just started kind of connecting some dots a little bit as far as, you know, nobody knows about it, maybe education program, I like kids and uh, that kind of thing. So Dr. Marsh and I, we'd spent a lot of time talking. Uh, we did some research about what uh, environmental education was out there uh, at the time. And we saw a lot of passive 
programs, or maybe not lots, not the right word, but we saw passive programs, not very many proactive programs. So we were kind of taking all this into account. And I also have a friend in the meeting today, uh, Donna Stotts, that uh, was environmental educator at uh, Horn Point University of Maryland. And I would see her there while I was doing my regular fish jobby job. And uh, I would just learned a lot from her. Um, I took an environmental education class online and I was just kind of putting things together and and, and Paul and I, we worked up a, a grant proposal and then we had that ready to go. So in 2008 though, Paul took our laboratory out of Arizona State University and formed Marsh and Associates Native Fish Lab. So that was different. So we left Arizona State then. And um, I'm still there now uh, and it's still going strong. And at the same time, is when we were ready to take off with uh, with with sharing tales, and we had we had a proposal all ready to go. We had a uh, funding partner with the Bureau of Reclamation at the Phoenix area office, and if you know Rob Clarkson, he was a big player in that. And our proposal uh, a grant was for the uh, three year time frame, 2008 to 2011. And um, we had a lot of work to do. <laughs> um, and I like to reiterate that I am not an educator. I am a fish scientist and not a big one of that. So, uh, so this was a very uphill process. So, um, you know, but I had kids that were in kindergarten and first and second grades and I was seeing what they were up to as well. So I thought that would be the age group that I would like to go for. We didn't see a lot of um, programming in that age group. So we would, we decided to do that. So what we planned was we would see the kids in kindergarten, then we'd go see them again in first grade and then go see them again in second grade. That'd give them three chances to hear about these native Arizona fishes and, and it would just, you know, build and that would be a, a great program. So we couldn't just go in with fish because we couldn't take fish with us. So we had to create a lot of different things. And we also had to figure out, well, what did the teachers need? Well, the teachers needed support and didn't need, but that could be supported through learning what they had to teach the kids through the Arizona science standards. So we reviewed those for each grade level and saw, well, where can we t talk about our fish in support of the Arizona science standards so that teachers could use us as a resource in their own curriculum or if they just wanted us for fun, whatever they wanted, we were available to them. So that's how we did it. So like as an example, in kindergarten, they teach uh, fish uh, and they teach uh, parts of animals and things like that and structures and their, and their specific jobs and things like that. Well, why not learn fish parts, but with native fish? See, so that's kind of how we kind of brought that all together. So we did that for each each grade level. Um, we had to create everything. So again, I didn't have a lot of experience in a lot of things, Photoshop, creating things. Um, I had some art training, so I was ready to go, but it still was a bit uphill. So we had to create everything. We have uh, pre-visit materials, post-visit materials, uh, teacher instructions, things like that. One of our favorite things we were able to create were our fish toys, our native fish toys. And huge shout out to Safari, who uh, was a very great helper in that. And uh, these are very, very special toys that you can only get uh, through us for the most part. Um, and then we had to develop our online, or not online, our on-site in-person visits and it was like well how are we going to do that <laughs> that was its own what are we going to do so we had a lot to do a lot to develop and in this time frame when we first started out we were still making materials we, we didn't have materials already you know so we had to make our materials and then so they had asked us to stay local and if it went well locally, then we could move out through the state. And it went well locally. <laughs> and we moved out from the state. And it was very exciting to be a statewide um, environmental education, public outreach, all the, all the words, um, program. And that was just, just super, super exciting. So I drove. I drove everywhere. North, south, east, west. I drive my friends crazy when we travel now. And I'm like, I think I went to that school there because I feel like I went to every school in this state. Um, I hauled a lot of gear um, throughout this talk. I'm going to talk about lessons and challenges and solutions. Lesson one, carts. <laughs> um, carts. 
Okay, and then uh, we were in a variety of different locations in schools. We were in the classrooms, we were in the gyms, we were in the multi-purpose rooms. I was in a hallway once. Um, we had to be inside because how we decided to do our online visits, or how do I keep saying online, our in-person visits is we used uh, screens and PowerPoints. We had to be inside, so we had to have some uh, access to power and things like that. But, um, and then of course we saw a lot of kiddos. So our plan for this three year project was to uh, see 30,000 kids. That was just a number that Dr. Marsh and I worked up and we're like, yeah, we, should, we can do that, sure. <laughs> never had a program before, never been a teacher before. Yeah, absolutely, no problem. Uh, so that said, we actually went above that, whoops, let me back up a little bit. We went and we actually met with 33,000 kids. Now again, we saw some in kindergarten, saw them again in first grade and saw them again in second grade. So there's a little overlap in who we saw, but then also you lost students and gained students. So ultimately in the, in the end, we saw about 33,000 kids. So again, lessons, challenges, and solutions. Um, I did not know how to control kids and, you know, 100 kids or so. So what I want to say here, and it's most important, that the Arizona public elementary school teachers rock, and I learned everything from them. And they taught me all their tricks, um, whether they taught me or I just heard them, and I learned from them and how to control groups because that was not easy to do. Um, I had to talk kindergarten, first grade, and second grade, and, and use words that made sense and not the words that we might use and kind of break things down. And then just kind of how overall the presentations went, um, I learned uh, how to do that. And when they got feedback from the teachers uh, throughout this time, we provided uh, questionnaires for them to answer to see if we were affecting the information that the kids received. Um, during the before the program, during the program, and then anything after the program. So we had a lot a lot. And uh, if you want to follow up on that, please go to our website, to our FAQ page, and scroll down and you'll see we uh, actually uh, reported this in an article for Applied Environmental Education and Communication. And you can read our paper and there's probably more issues that we had in there and successes and successes. So that said, um, at the end of this time frame, I really thought that because we had a successful ad adventure in this that this uh, this would continue. Um, as it turned out, it did not. Um, it did not continue uh, with 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 the, how it was at the time. So we had to uh, the go out of the box a little bit. And in 2013, we started a Marsh Education, which is a, a nonprofit portion of Marsh and Associates, a 5013C company, so that we could go after the alternative types of funding. Because we had where with the schools, it was free to schools then, and we wanted to keep that up. So we're like, okay, well let's let's go for some some more funding. And uh, Marsh Education is still going today um, since 2013. However, um, I was very, very unsuccessful at um, securing funding, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, so we had to kind of get all of our ducks in a row with this uh, nonprofit organization and had a board and, and have a board and all these things. So vision, we had vision. We knew what our vision was very clearly. Our mission, yep, we had our mission was pretty solid. Goal, really wanted to achieve this goal big time. The objective is where things got a little challenging. Again, uh, developing funding. I know who I'm talking to here. You all know what I'm talking about there. So, and that was probably some of our biggest challenges. So while we were as this nonprofit organization, we did a lot of things to help generate funding by fundraising, uh, creating uh, merchandise for donations. We have stickers, books, all kinds of things. You gotta, you gotta love these guys. If you need some of those guys in your life, if you don't have some. And um, it was, it was a big deal fundraising because we really wanted to maintain and achieve that objective, our goal and objective. But like I was saying, the lessons, challenges and solutions, it's not easy um, doing that. And it's not very easy at all. And, and I, I didn't do very well at that, to be very, very honest with you. So not a lot happened uh, with Marsh Education and reaching out to kids until 2015. Um, during the time when we were reaching kids uh, in that time frame, we had teachers, we were letting them know that we were coming to the end of our program and they're like, well, we'll pay you. And I'm like, well, okay, but you know, I like not that having that happen. So uh, 
a little bit of a break there, if you will. But in 2015, uh, we, we kind of got things going again. We didn't have uh, enough money from fundraising to travel and be a statewide program anymore. So that portion stopped. And we were using, let's see, I had some around here. I had my whole collection, whole my collection of, of toys. Um, we had those, we we're using those for fundraising. So we didn't include toys uh, anymore with our visits, but we still provided uh, everything else the same. So uh, up until March of 2020, we're doing it. We're doing it through fundraising. Uh, we had a mix of schools being able, able to pay the fee and the ones that couldn't, we were providing our program for free. We, we happened onto a wonderful uh, little partnership with uh, Sea Life Trust and Sea Life that helped give us more of a boost into our, giving our program to free. So we're meeting some of our objective and our goals there a little bit. Um, and and that, that kept us going for a while. And uh, in this time frame, we were able to reach 10,000 more kids. And I'm very proud of that because, again, uphill raising money. So, uh, so we reached about 10,000 kids. And then in April 2020, that happened. <laughs> and that just changed everything. So, again, we we're an on site. We go to schools. We're proactive. We're out there reaching the schools. And that just stopped us in our tracks again. So I got stopped in my tracks several times. I got stopped in my tracks again. <laughs> and luckily, uh, as you heard, I have a band and a lot of bands were streaming music and different shows were streaming things. And I started thinking, well, could we stream sharing towels? Is that a possibility? And I was like, okay, now I have to learn about that. You know, I've been learning this whole time about everything else. So why not learn some more stuff? So I have another person in the room that I'd like to acknowledge is Miss Christine Paul. Don't get teary eye there. Um, one of our uh, kindergarten teachers that was with us the whole time and supported us big time the whole time. And she met with me and gave me some ideas. So hers was the first class uh, that we met and I got to hear kids again in November of 2020. Sorry, I knew I'd do it. Um, and it was just a dream. It was just an absolute dream uh, seeing the kids again. So that's how we're doing it now. We're doing it like you see me now, <laughs> uh, very much virtual. Um, and the beauty of being virtual is I'm back to being a statewide program again. And this year we were, uh, reached out to our statewide kiddos and we, we got some of our teachers again in Globe, in Tucson, Kienta. I mean, come on, it's just perfect. How can that be more perfect than that? So that said, in this time frame of being a virtual uh, program again, excuse me, or being a virtual program, we did get a little funding through our uh, nonprofit organization. And it's, again, these are some through chance meetings of people and meeting Eric Proctor uh, at Arizona Game and Fish. And, you know, through all the, the things you have to do to receive funding, we were awarded an Arizona Game and Fish Heritage uh, K through 12 small grant grant. And it was fabulous. And we use this to help offset our costs for our scheduling. Um, we have a scheduling online service that we use because we used to be on site and we'd have one 45 minute ish program and that wouldn't work out virtually. Miss Paul and I, we worked on that and we decided we should split it into two sessions for one program. So this online scheduling helps teachers, you know, they got 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there. So we see the kids twice now um, for the one program for the grade. So that this uh, a grant has helped us with that. Um, and uh, doing our Zoom room, our Zoom as well, um, we needed to update some books. So we have some soft cover books and some hard cover books. You guys, we have a fish book out there. <laughs> um, and then also we're shipping all of our things. We always mailed pre-visit materials before, but we would take any anything with us before after but we couldn't do that so we have to we have to ship everything now so that grant helped us with that then we got this one that helped give us more of a boost in our objective of, of, of well developing our funding but our goal for the be free so free to schools and that's been great with the bureau of reclamation and the fish and wildlife service was huge um, my dates on here are incorrect i have to adjust them really quickly to uh, 2022 Okay, but this was big. This helped us get toys back in kids' hands again, because that's huge. Um, I believe that is one of the lessons that I've learned that the toys belong in the kids' hands and of our fishes, the native fishes, and we were able to bring a razorback sucker back and we're in the process right now of bringing back the loach minnow. So uh, good times.
So we couldn't be more grateful for this partnership as well. So those two partnerships, along with all the fundraising that we're always up to, um, helps bring us into schools. So now moving on into uh, what we have, how it started. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't start very well. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. So uh, at the time I didn't, I've, I've gotten a little better, but I had the software that came with the camera. Um, I kind of set it up like this. Um, that's just a, a black shower curtain trying to kind of make a thing. I didn't like this, so I kept work on it. And luckily YouTube exists. And this is where we are now. <laughs> Still not a video person. So that's what it looks like behind the scenes. So that's what it looks like behind the scenes for me. So the kids get this just like you're getting this. I had to learn about lighting. I had to learn about green screens. I had a lot to learn. I had to learn about what to put in front of me as far as cameras, um, software to run the cameras, having two different things going on and, and watching both different things to, to make things go as smoothly as possible, believe it or not. Um, I have a whole checklist that I go through for every session to make sure it runs as smoothly as possible. And then I put things behind me so that I don't forget as well. So very much like a television show, right? But we're always live with the kiddos and that, that makes it really, really wonderful. Um, by grade level, going from uh, in-person to virtual, not a lot changed not a lot changed we still give a lot of of things to the kids and pre and post visit materials reading um, materials counting and kindergarten and math and first and second grade we do some spelling definitely artwork um, we reinforce the fish names with a lot of fish pictures and videos so you might even some of your names might even be in in our presentation if you put pictures and videos up on the internet. Um, we have our life-size models and other props that we use. And uh, we do pretend play and we go underwater and we have question and answer time. So all this was pretty much the same as we did when we were in person. So not a lot changed there. Um, what did change is some of our after presentation hands-on activities. So let me just show off a little bit. So the kids used to be able to in uh, first grade, they go first grade first, check out the size of fish eggs. We found some beads that were the same size as fish eggs and we did the whole life cycle and they had an opportunity to check that out. In second grade, we turned them into fish scientists and we had some razorback suckers made and let's see, everybody's tagged. <laughs> And they had a chance to check out um, tagged fish as well. Um, kindergarten, whoops, whoopsie, whoopsie daisies. In kindergarten, they got to measure themselves with a, and it disappears. That's what is one thing that's challenging. They got to measure themselves with a Colorado pike minnow, and they can't do any of these hands-on activity anymore. So one of the things, whoops, one of the things that we did do is we created um, a little hands-on fish measuring activity, kind of like our fish measuring boards <laughs> with the Colorado pike minnow so they can see if they're bigger or smaller than that big guy. So we had to adjust there a little bit with hands-on activities, but otherwise I feel like our program's still pretty much the same and that makes me very happy. So again, they get our pre-visit materials, post-visit materials. Um, we asked the teachers to give us uh, some extra time in there because in, when it first started, a lot of the kids were at home. So the teachers had to get our materials, receive our materials, sort them out, and then get them to the kids at home. So if they were lucky enough to still be in school, that that process wasn't a problem, but the, at the home remote kids, that was that was a bit of a challenge, but that worked out well. The kids seemed to have a good time. Um, this is what the kids see, just like what you see. If you haven't been in school for a while, they have these things. Um, it looks like a TV, but they're a smart board. Um, if the classrooms don't have these, they might have a mobile, and that's where I pop in, is is on their, um, on their smart boards. And uh, some of the kids that are at home, they just, I just see them through their regular computers that they're doing their remote learning at. One of our schools is still at remote. Uh, the kids are still at home. So I saw them. They all just joined the Zoom meeting and we go from there. Um, it's still very much interactive. So the kids might stay in just their classroom or more kids might join up in the same classroom, but it's still a very much interactive program and I think they have a good time. This is just fun. You should do this. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay. So it's very important to me that they get to hear and we get to interact. We've had people suggest, well, just make a recording and put it on YouTube. And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't think that's the same. And I uh, rather care for it to be as live as possible. Um, again, some of the challenges that we had and the solutions was that we had two presentations going on time. So for all grade levels, I had to rework everything and kind of set it up just as we're doing you guys with me today as we went from this to kind of how we're doing today. Um, I maintained my um, sweet look because I think that's important for kids to recognize you from year to year to year. Um, so that that didn't change. I, I lost some sleeves, but that was about it. Um, it is important that the kids know what special group of animals that we're talking about. It's very important to know that these animals live in Arizona with us and they need to know that that makes them very special, that they can't find them anyplace else hardly in the world except the state around us right okay and then I also really stress big time in all of our grade levels what it is to be a scientist and how it's important that scientists exist and how kindergartners first graders and second graders all act like scientists and we talk about that and I think that that's rather cool to to do that with kids and I, I hear them sometimes they're like oh when I say that. So I think I think they like that. Um, I make sure that in all of our programs that they're very well aware of what native means for us and talking about that with our animals and they've been here a long time. And you know, I go ahead and get them any way I can. <laughs> and that they've been here since dinosaurs and whatnot because it's important that they know about this group of animals because we're building up to that um, throughout our programming. Uh, we don't hide from them being endangered. We talk about that and we put it on a, a level that every grade level can understand and that we're all working together to help protect these guys out there and we give them an opportunity to, t to hear about how they can help as well because, you know, kids want to help. So we talk about that with them. Um, the next few slides are kind of some of the highlights from each of the grades that we do. So you can see what we do for each grade level. Um, we have six different fish. We have them in cartoons here. We also show them their pictures, their videos. Um, we, we keep track of numbers because these kids, right, they're learning their numbers and things. So we're always having numbers show up all the time. We stress again, there's 36 of these uh, native Arizona fishes out there because that's a big deal. Um, kindergartners are always working on their questions. They're learning their questions and their sight words. So, so I talk about a question mark and things like that. And we read this together and then they answer me and they give me all kinds of good answers and that's fabulous. We do a lot of counting. We always have that one wayward bony tail that's always troublesome out there. And then the kids in kindergarten are always working on their counting up to 100. And we talk about how scientists count things all the time, just as much as kindergartners do and writing our letters and numbers. And we just reinforce that we're the same as much as possible. And speaking of the same, um, both or all three of our programs work with uh, these words the same. And we talk about how these are the same kind of animals that they're fish, but then we also talk about how they're different. And then in kindergarten, we talk about how uh, people are the same as fish in the kids' minds are just blown. And I'm just like, no, no, I got you. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I've learned is to just do one word at a time so we can focus on the one word and then kind of uh, bring it all together. So this grouping of words is all about how people and fish breathe and we're, that we're doing the same kind of things and we need the same thing to breathe because uh, to be alive and in, in kindergarten they talk about living things and non-living things and then of course about the different parts and in this one in particular I do have um, props to help bring it home as well so again some of my green disappears but it's our giant desert pupfish in our, our pretend water and we rip faces off and show gills. <laughs> So we have props and videos and pictures to kind of highlight all the good stuff. Um, in first grade, uh, we introduce them to four new fish plus two fish from kindergarten. Again, hitting home that there's really 36 native Arizona fishes there, out there, but there's only time to talk about six. Um, and using all of our videos and pictures again. Um, the fun thing about first grade is we have a chance to do data books uh, with them and uh, get them into the scientific method because they're doing it. They're in there doing the scientific method and we talk about observation, question, hypothesis, and they get to see if their number one finger is bigger or smaller than a heel of top mono. Come on, that's good stuff. <laughs> so they get to do that in first grade. Um, we do the same 
and the same and the same and different again because we're trying to get to groups and how scientists once they know things are the same and different we can move them around into groups because we talk about things like that in first grade because we want to talk about groups so we have our groups of animals i give them some time to, to think about that and talk about that and hopefully they find my group of birds <laughs> and then we talk about how they're birds but they're different and, and use some of the words that we use. And once we know those differences, we can move them into different groups. And then we can talk about groups of fish. And right, and now we're kind of getting into what you guys all know, my fish people out there. There are the three groups of fish, and then our, our fish or the native fishes are down there in that third group of fish. And then we just ask questions related to this and, and different parts, because we're still learning about parts of different animals. And we'll talk about those parts and how people have the same or different parts. And we'll say, well, do jaws show up in all these groups? And the kids are like, yeah, no, and all the things that they answer. And then we highlight that with like our yeses or our noes. And if we have a prop or a photo, we'll do that to kind of highlight the differences and hopefully freak them out a little bit because <laughs> that's that's good stuff right there all right and so we do that and then then we kind of dig into just um our the third group of fish where our fish fall into and here we kind of check them out differences between like heads and tails and we go and check them out and then we talk about the differences between even within our own group of fish we have differences in where their mouth position is and what they might eat related to their mouth positions and where they live in their habitats. So we we dig into all of it. We just kind of kind of lead up into it. Um, and then again, like I said, love to show off the pictures <laughs> of the different things that they wouldn't get to see otherwise about our native Arizona fishes. Also in first grade, we, we delve into life cycle. That's part of their uh, science standards. We, we use cartoon people and then we just jump right on into our fishes and we talk about how um, our fishes are, are mostly this kind of a life cycle, except for we have that uh, Gila top minnow we know. Um, but we kind of lean into this one and we go right through all the steps and we highlight things with our magnifying glass and talk about what things look like and all that good stuff. In second grade, we bring all 10 fishes back. <laughs> we tell them one more time that there's 36 of these guys out there. Even my friends that don't know do fishes are gonna remember this forever because of this talk. <laughs> all right, and then we have another data book in, uh, in second grade and this is all about having the biggest mouth in second grade and uh, we talk about how big that mouth might be on that uh, Colorado pike minnow and in in those data books they have an opportunity to graph their data as well so scientific method we take care of all that we go back to the same and different and groups again because now we're finally going to bring together the two groups of fish that we have here in Arizona we have our native Arizona fishes and then we have to talk about our non-native fishes and that's where we do it is in second grade so we've hopefully seen the kids every year or at least talk about it in a way in second grade if we've not seen them before that they see that there's a difference and then we just talk about what it is to be a non-native fish and we talk about they haven't been here as long and they're from all over the world and you know how they got here as an example they brought in for as a food supply a food source right and that there's more than a hundred of these and of course by now they're like they know their numbers are like they know this number is bigger than 36 you know we don't talk about it but they just see it that there's more than those right and then a lot of our kids are fishermen so we want to make sure that they hear their fishes so we mention a couple of them by name so they can kind of say okay because i had never talked about their fish before so i wanted to make sure that they knew that their fish were represented out there and then we kind of go through each group and we kind of check out their parts again because again parts and their jobs are big in the science standards so we just kind of go through and you'll see that for the most part I kind of keep it pretty even where, where it's possible. We talk about mouths, they all have mouths, and, but some have bigger mouths than others, right? Um, we don't have any teeth uh, in our, uh, in the native Arizona group of fishes, um, but they're not all have teeth in the non-native. So see some, some, see them down here. So uh, we go through a dorsal fin and fin rays and spiny fin rays and spines. And so by checking out these different parts, then we can talk about what it is to have defense. And, you know, we it's still a mixed bag there as well. And that, you know, you might also be defenseless. It depends. It depends on what you got going on for you as parts. So we have all this information and then we're bringing it around and into the food chain. 
because that's a part of what's going on in second grade as well. And we talk about how that works from small to big and all of that. And we don't hide from the fact that fish eat fish out there. Those kids, they want to know about it. They ask about it. And we, we start bringing all this together. And what we decided to do in second grade was to ask a question and see if we could help connect dots to this question. Um, can the two groups of Arizona fish share habitat and live and grow? Because live and grow has been a big part of all three of our grade levels and habitat as well. And now we they've been introduced to the two groups of fish. So we go through all this again about what's being endangered and protect and all that stuff. We, we go through the food chain, we go through the life cycle with native and non-native fishes. We talk about habitat, we, we pull it all together and we start connecting the dots and we're like, could it be something in the food chain that's causing the native fishes to be endangered or, or maybe it's something in the life cycle or maybe it's something out there in the habitat. There's, there's, there's something because we never talked about why we just always said that they were and that that might be preventing them from um, living and growing and potentially being endangered and after we present all of our material and how we present it you pretty much come up with two answers right and we don't want to leave the, leave the kids confusing so we change our question how can we help or can we help the two groups of arizona fish share habitat and live and grow and um we're going to go with yes <laughs> we want to stay very positive and we do uh, do this work as well all of our fish friends out there so we have a variety of the different ways that we help kind of have everybody live and grow even though they're kind of out in the same habitat and we talk about the things that we're out there doing right now and we have our backwater ponds and we talk about the barrier and and how that keeps you know the fish from moving back and forth but the water moves back and forth and once everything's all sorted out we can put our natives in the one area and their non-natives stay in the other area and that helps everybody out there doing their life cycle staying out of the food chain if you will and everybody can live and grow and then that brings us sort of full circle, if you will, to things being endangered. And then we can kind of get into conservation a little bit. So again, this is all in second grade and it's been this buildup if it all works out. <laughs> and if it doesn't work out, we do our best to kind of ease the any new, just brand new to us second graders into the program. But but we actually get to this and, and that's, that's pretty awesome. So those are the highlights uh, from the three uh, grade levels that, that we teach. We're back to my little timeline of things just to keep you on track. So we're down in here um, in the present of sharing tales. So, in this time frame, uh, just ending a few weeks ago, um, we have reached 3,000 kids virtually. And I'm telling you, that's 3,000 more kids than I ever thought we'd see. I thought we were, we were done. So that was, that was uh, very exciting. So overall, for this program that just came from discussions with Dr. Paul Marsh and how frustrated I was, um, we have reached um, probably over 46,000 students um, in 11 years with a little time off in between for kind of sorting and rearranging thoughts there. Um, and, and it's just been an absolute blast. So back to this grant and the, the time change is that there's there's a, uh, it's going to kind of actually end uh, in 2022 this year. I thought we were going to get through into 2023, but we're not going to quite do that. But with kind of getting it to the end of the year, we're going to be able to see probably about another 4,000 kids. So we have some more other money and kind of putting it all together in one pot. And we should see 4,000 kids bringing us to a total of uh, about this many kids that have received a majority of the information that I showed you. We've kind of edited things as things worked and didn't work, but I think that's pretty good. I don't know of other programs out there. I have no idea of their numbers or anything like that, but I'm pretty proud of it and I feel it's been very successful. We were out at an Arizona Game and Fish event that Eric Proctor invited us to and uh, a tall kid came walking by and uh, we had some of our fish toys out. He's like, I have one of those. So there you go. So toys uh, as a lesson and uh, a solution as well. And uh, so that was rather exciting. But we do have some changes coming about that I would like to share with you. Um, as of the end of December, I will no longer be with uh, Martian Associates at the Native Fish Lab. And as far as I know, as of the end of December, Marsh Education will also no longer uh, be um, around. So that brings up January 2023, and I'm not really sure what's going to happen then. So I'm open to ideas. So give me a call, send me an email. Um, I think we have a great thing going here. I have some ideas, 
and uh, we'll see what happens. So that said, I got a lot of thank yous. Hopefully everybody's up here. Um, none of this would have happened if I didn't have some kiddos of my own and this, this frustrating job of people not knowing about their own animals in their own state. Um, we couldn't have done it without our teachers out there in those out in the trenches, the, the public elementary school teachers. And I have two listed here. There's Miss Paul's name and Miss Jennifer Vorwerk's uh, for a lot of the photos and videos that they sent me. And of course, everybody at the office, all of our funding people and just, just everybody. You can see them. You see them for yourself. Um, we had a lot of people along the way. So thank you, CCAST, <laughs> again, for letting me be a part of your program and talking one more time about our little fish program. Uh, Deanna, Christy, and Matt. And Christy, thanks for fielding all my questions. <laughs> and that's what I have for you guys today. So I have no idea what kind of questions you have, if you even have any. Um, but thank you very much for attending this talk today. That was great. Thank you so much, Carol. Um, really awesome to see all of the many things you've done and especially how well you handled the pandemic and how adaptable <laughs> this program has been. So um, great job. That was very, very interesting. Um, we do have a few questions. I'm going to kind of um, go through them in order here. Um, the first question, um, first two questions actually, I'll start with the first one from Donna. Um, did you work directly with teachers to develop the materials? I found we needed to follow the county education system's curriculum model and not every county was the same. I, thank you, Donna, for the question. Um, I did and I didn't. So I use the state science standards. I don't know how it works in Arizona if there's anything by county. Couldn't tell you. Um, so I just stuck with the, the state science standards. Um, as far as the materials, I was seeing what my own kids were doing in their kindergarten, first and second grades. I forget where they were in the development of this, but I could see what they were doing. So one of the resources we created was a writing book and it has the the big lines in it with the dots across it. So I made those because I saw those with my own kids. So uh, the school that they were in, I did talk to their teacher in particular and I would talk to her about things, but I don't know that I actually showed them our materials. I just kind of leaned in. Uh, Christine Paul, up in Cave Creek <laughs> at Desert Sun Academy, huge um, as well as far as um, this. And again, I don't know if I asked her about materials or not, but definitely as far as programming and the online version was awesome. Help with that. Cool, yeah. And um, she did actually leave a comment in the chat um, <laughs> that I'll read. Sharing Tales has done an amazing job at, ma at matching the AZ standards in reading, writing, math, and science. Uh, awesome. Materials are developmentally appropriate, interactive, and great visuals. I've enjoyed this with my K-1 for over 10 years. So thankful as a public educator for this program to increase enthusiasm and the love for learning. Awesome. So a little shout out there. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you can get me again. <laughs> awesome. Um, and I think you kind of answered uh, Donna's second question. Was that the, the state program or curriculum? Was that the next generation science standards? Is that the same thing? Um, the original, let me just turn a button off I have. Hold on a second. I have a timer so I don't talk too long for sharing tales and for here. Um, I had the state standards at that time and then they were updated in 2019 and of the Arizona State Standards. And just for your information, um, and their core ideas of using science, this is where we're okay. Um, applications of science have uh, both positive and ne negative ethical, social, economical, and or political implications. That's pretty heavy. And that's kindergarten, first and second. I've not gone beyond that. I'm sure they're all in there. But so, so where we know that it's contentious and native and non-native, we don't go contentious, but we have the information and it's still it's okay um because we kind of go with what the standards are so i hope i answered that question <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> awesome um one more question uh, let's see about the um this is from matt wanted to gauge your thoughts on the longer term impacts this program has on kids um since you know this has been going on about 11 years you know have you followed up or heard from anyone um, who still has interest or is working with fishes or anything like that? 
Um, you know, it's funny. I realized this year that the kids from either, so I've started seeing kids, actual kiddos in 2009 and the math on that, they should be going to college if they're going to college about last year and this year. And then on the side, I teach college biology and I'm like, they're going to show up in one of my classrooms one of these days. And they're just going to walk in and be like the fish lady. And, um, cause I let totally let them call me the fish lady. Um, and uh, so I don't know, I wanted to reach out to the schools and maybe pop in. I wanted to do that for the graduating class of, and to see, just pop in and just, anybody recognize me? If not, okay. <laughs> and then I wanted to follow up with anybody who did and see what they were doing. So I like to think that it's in there somewhere. I yeah. like to think so. Definitely. And no. yeah, it'll be super interesting to see if you, yeah, <laughs> if you come across some of these students in your, in your classroom, that'll I'll really make you, it full circle. <laughs> well, I will tell you in my classroom at the college, I have an Arizona Game and Fish native fish poster. We talk about fish all the time. I go. don't know if Pilar is here. I thought maybe Pilar is here. I talk about Pilar all the time, show her a video. And I did just write a recommendation for a student this week that's going to ASU to the uh, Honors College, and he's going into conservation oh, ecology. That's so awesome. <laughs> I don't know if I helped or not. <laughs> I bet you did. That's, that's really great. So I can retire now. We got one for the team. <laughs> hey, that's success for sure. Um, yeah, that's all I have right now for questions. I will, Carol, since you can't see the chat, um, I'll probably email you a copy if that's okay. You have lots okay. of kudos coming in and oh, I want awesome. you to be able to see those. So from various awesome. people, um, but we have a few more minutes. So I'll kind of open the floor. Does anyone else have questions or comments they want to say out loud to Carol? Feel free to <laughs> unmute yourself or continue in the chat. Hey, Carol, this is Dan Levitt, Fish and Wildlife oh, Service. Hi, Dan. Hey, um, I just wanted to let you know I dropped a picture of our daughter in the chat with a uh, stuffed Razorback Sucker. So. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, here, I'm here too, Carol, and we love sharing tales. Of course, we oh, love Razorback and native fishes. And so we've got another person on the team already, even though she's only six months. She's Excellent. <laughs> That's two. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys very much for being here and thank you for sharing that. Aww. Gave me goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, I'm sad I'm sad that um this specific program won't be continuing, but it sounds like you're still gonna be continuing. I got educate, ideas. So. <laughs> I have ideas. I just, you know, we'll see. We'll see yeah. what happens. Yeah, well, anything we can do to support you. Um, Thank you. I appreciate out. that. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, one oh, last no. call for any questions. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close us out here. Let's see. Um, I'm going to quickly just drop some links in the chat that I will explain here in a second. If I can get my chat to work, okay. All right, thank you everyone so much for taking the time to join us today. Um, like we said, this webinar was recorded and will be made available on our CCAST YouTube channel. That link is in the chat. You can also find all previous CCAST webinars there. Um, we also encourage you to visit CCAST and the case study dashboard where we currently have 151 case studies, including one from Carol and <laughs> the program. Um, we're continuing as always to work on lining up webinar speakers for the coming months. Um, so if you would like to receive the webinar announcements and are already on our mailing list, um, please feel free, to out, feel free to reach out to me or Matt Graba. Um, and we thank you all for your time. And thank you again, Carol, for joining us to give this excellent presentation. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And right. everyone Bye, have everybody. a great day. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.